If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably because a child you love and care for is differently wired. Are they also struggling in their current educational setting, seen only for what they're doing wrong while longing for positive relationships with peers and others? Envision a world where your child's unique abilities are not just recognized, but celebrated. A world where they can connect with others and their true potential is seen and appreciated. The Strength-Based Assessment Lab's mission is to build a world for your child just like that. Through its innovative approach, it aims to empower students, families, educators, and professionals to create positive, effective, and collaborative learning experiences. Be a part of shaping a brighter future for your child. Visit www.bgs.edu to learn more about what a strength-based assessment could mean for your family. That's bgs.edu. But that's what the book really strives for is looking under the hood. Don't just go to the top and say, this child has got a temper out of control. So we're going to try this med. Oh, and now we have to improve attention. Now we have to do this med. And then, and then we have three or four meds stacked up and it's not really getting this child up to a functional level. We have to go look someplace else. Welcome to the Tilt Parenting Podcast, a podcast featuring interviews and conversations aimed at inspiring, informing, and supporting parents raising differently wired kids. I'm your host, Debbie Reber, and today I'm talking with Robin McAvoy, one of the co-authors of the new book, Child Decoded, Unlocking Complex Issues in Your Child's Learning, Behavior, or Attention. I'm really excited to bring this conversation to you all and give you an inside look at this book as it's truly a unique and important addition to what currently exists in terms of books to help parents like us meet our exceptional kids' needs. Robin, a developmental neuropsychologist and one of the three authors of the book, explains that they wrote Child Decoded to be that owner's manual we all wish we had for our differently wired child. And it really is a new kind of book because... As you'll hear in our conversation, it provides parents with a broader understanding of the issues that may be affecting their children, whether there's a diagnosis or not, as well as concise information on who can help and how. It's truly a comprehensive, in my opinion, game-changing book for parents like us who aren't sure where to start or where to focus our efforts, especially for those of us whose kids have more than one diagnosis and we're not sure what is affecting what. Robin breaks it all down for us in our conversation. And before I get to the episode, did you know that some of the production costs for the podcast are being offset by generous donations from listeners? Thanks to listeners like Julie Davis and Zoe Martin, I'm now able to outsource my final post-production cost, which is fantastic and so incredibly appreciated. My goal is to eventually have all of these post-production tasks outsourced. If you'd like to help us reach our goal, please consider supporting us through our Patreon campaign. Patreon is a simple membership platform that allows listeners like you to make a small monthly contribution, as little as $2 a month, to fund our efforts. If you want to help us, visit patreon.com slash tilt parenting. And now I'll get on with the show. Hi, Robin. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to this conversation and to learn more about your book, Child Decoded. But before we get into that, I always like to ask guests to tell us a little bit about who they are. You know, kind of, I love knowing people's personal whys for the work that they're doing. And I'd love to just hear more about your story. Well, my name is Robin McAvoy. And my long title is Developmental Neuropsychologist, which means I study the development of children particularly the development of brain and thinking skills and different types of thinking skills and language and how it all integrates together. I don't know why, but I've been interested in the field since I was 12. Mm-hmm. started reading books on child development when I was 12 years old. I do come from a family heavily weighted towards dyslexia. <laughs> so we can spot dyslexia and all its permutations and forms around here. Um, But I really enjoy the work of working with families with children who are not typical learners, but also great kids. And how do we help them, you know, flourish? How do we help them thrive? And of course, this book is about how do we help parents understand their child's needs and then create a path forward that's unique to their child's situation. I love that you started reading about child development when you were 12. That was just 
an interest of yours? Was or did you have a adult in your life who was involved in that kind of work? No, I did not. Yeah, I I I had a mother who drove a school bus for handicapped kids and a dad who owned a gas station. <laughs> and I just it was just me. I just really enjoyed child development and um and the process of change over time and how do we become who we are? And I started being interested in a, at a very early age. And I like stories. And so I do see a lot of this as the child's story of what influenced creating them. That's so fascinating. I love that. It's rare to hear someone who kind of has such a sense of their passion at so young an age. So that's really cool. So I, we want to talk about the book. And as a way to get started, would you mind telling us kind of what your goals were for the book and kind of how did it come about? Well, uh, I have two co-authors slash editors on the book, Kim Gangwish and Marika Jones. And Kim is uh, a complementary and alternative like care provider. She does acupressure. And then I'm a developmental neuropsychologist, more in the more traditional side of science. And we got to know each other through some shared work. And I must admit, I did not know how to use an acupressurist when I first met her. But over the years, I would run into families who have done all the right things in terms of standard of care. They're working with the right reading therapist, they're working with the right psychiatrist, or they're working with the right psychologist, or they're working with all of them um, because their child has complex needs. They're doing their standard of care very thoroughly, and they're still not in a good place. And it was through contacting you know, and meeting people like Kim that I started to find other resources for families. Um, and we started digging underneath. It's like, well, what else might be going on for this child that would make them a little more available to benefit from the services that they are getting and the support that they're getting. And the book kind of came out of our work from there. And we laugh because we put it in introduction, what made you write the book? And for Kim and I, it's because we spent so much time on the phone talking to parents that maybe we weren't even going to see because we didn't think we were the right starting point. But they needed some sense of direction and they didn't know where to start or where to go from there. And that's what the book is about trying to figure out what are your starting points and where to go from there. And basically, because we thought that level of um, communication, that broad level of communication to families was needed. As you're talking, I'm thinking of just emails I get from parents and so many members of the Tilt community, they find us at the very beginning of their journey, and they are feeling just so overwhelmed and unsure about where to start. I mean, it's it's just super confusing, no matter how organized you are, or resourceful, or, you know, good at kind of connecting with people, it still can be so daunting to know what is this path going to look like. And so I think there's such a need for a book like this. And, and I'm excited to kind of get into it a little bit more, because I know our listeners are going to be very interested. So can you tell us maybe how's the book structured? How would parents interact with with the book, since it really is for parents to kind of figure out what that path would look like. Exactly. And we get back to that starting point sort of thing um, is how, how, where do I start? Where do I start? And you can talk to your pediatrician and you can talk to other parents who have been through similar challenges or whose child has challenges, but they're different from your child's challenges. So does their path work for you? So this book starts with a checklist that's grouped into categories. And so just go, you're going through the checklist and then that will take you, it doesn't even know, you're not even sure what you're checking off in the beginning, but then it tells you what chapters might be more relevant to you. So you think you're dealing, say your child's not progressing in reading, so you, you're, you're pretty sure you have a reading disability there. But after you've gone through the checklist, you realize, oh, I've also checked off six things in the speech and language category. Well, maybe your child's reading problems have a foundation in some struggle with language, which is different from children who have a reading disability unrelated to language challenges. So it's going to be a slightly different path. And that's what it's for, to help you think through all your possible areas and say, these seem most relevant to me. And then those chapters then are the ones you can focus on. So is it, Do parents already have a diagnosis when they come to your book or are they in the earlier stages where they're just noticing that something is going on and they're trying to figure it out? 
it can go either way. Some parents are just trying to get started. But some parents have, we have parents coming on in who have a diagnosis or several diagnoses and a psychologist and a psychiatrist, and they're still struggling to get a path that really moves them forward. And that's where the book can help bring things forward. Sometimes people are just not integrating information that they have this child in talk-based therapy for the depression, but no one's really reconciled that this child actually couldn't speak so they were four or five years old, and they aren't strong with language. And talk-based therapy is therefore going to be stressful unless we have a therapist who's very sensitive that if I talk too long to this child, it's just going to overwhelm them and make them anxious. So you really want to see if there's add-ons. You you can have a couple of diagnoses that actually seem quite accurate, but you're still not making the headway you want. This may help you uncover a few more things. Darren and I are prepping for a big move at the moment. So we are fully leaning into any and everything that simplifies things. And that absolutely includes mealtimes. At a time when my executive functioning skills are being pushed to the limit, even planning and executing dinner for our family these days can feel like a really big lift. That's why I'm especially grateful for Green Chef, a meal service that offers pre-measured and prepped ingredients to my door. Each box is packed with foods you can feel good about, like whole fruits and vegetables, plus lean protein and whole grain options. In fact, one of the things I love most about Green Chef is that they offer options that prioritize gut and brain health, with science-backed recipes that feature ingredients like fiber, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. During this time of lots of stress, it feels really grounding to know we're supporting ourselves nutritionally. I will take all the support I can get. And Green Chef doesn't just cover dinner recipes. I can add high quality breakfasts, lunches, and snacks to my weekly box from Green Market. Green Chef has a special offer for Tilt listeners. Go to greenchef.com slash tilt50 and use code tilt50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's 50% off plus 20% off your next two months when you use the code tilt50 at greenchef.com slash tilt50. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Maybe I've watched too many seasons of The Amazing Race, but every time I have to go somewhere on the subway, I treat it like a competition. It's all about making the right gut decisions about which route will get me there the fastest. Sometimes those decisions get me where I'm going early, and other times my gambles don't really pay off. Probiotics can't help with most gut decisions, but if your gut needs a little support, Ritual has your back. Their Symbiotic Plus, a three-in-one supplement, has clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. I've been using Symbiotic Plus for about six months now, and it's become a core part of my morning routine. I take the mini capsule every morning while making my way through my inbox, whether I'm at home or I'm on the road, because it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And the capsule itself is delayed released, which helps it survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon. And that's exactly where we want it to go. Ritual invested in a study modeling the human colon, which showed that Symbiotic Plus significantly increased microbial diversity and the growth of beneficial bacteria. There's no more shame in your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. Get 25% off your first month for limited time at ritual.com slash tilt. Start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash tilt for 25% off. Yeah, I mean, as you're explaining that, it occurs to me that we do tend to address issues kind of in a vacuum, right? Especially children with multiple neuro differences. We're addressing this maybe with this medication and this with the social skills group and this with OT or, you know, a speech language pathologist and those different ways. But there's not usually this holistic approach, you know, someone who's got all the pieces and who's thinking about how they all relate to each other. Yeah, we try to help a parent get that holistic look or integrated look at their child as a whole. And then it sometimes there's so much clarity in in that. When I explain a sensory issue that your child is very sensitive to noise. So if your child spends a full day in the classroom, it's really like spending a full day on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Hmm. 
they are going to come home very, very tired and exhausted and needing to needing downtime. And so your desire to have them have a complete life by going into extracurriculars outside of school may not be in their best interest. And either we have to change the noise level in their classroom or the amount of time they spend in it, or we have to change their after school experience. Mm -hmm. But to understand that they're they're having a different experience from you and then look at what it would be like to live on the New York the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. How would you feel? Some people thrive on it, and most of us don't. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, just thinking about it <laughs> hurts my brain. Yeah. So okay, if someone comes to your book and because again, you know, and, and I said this before the call, I haven't finished reading through it. It is so comprehensive. And I am so excited actually to finish it because it addresses really so many different ways that kids can be neurodiverse and the complex ways that it can present and overlap with each other. So it, it's, it's, first of all, congratulations, I should have said that oh, oh, at the head of the call, it's really impressive. And it's such important work. So congratulations on the book. Well, thank you. It took six years to get that. Well, that's, I mean, I can't even imagine the amount of just research and it feels so comprehensive to me that I can't even imagine as an author myself, what went into that to make sure that you are really going to have this book that any parent could, could open and find the direction and help that would help their family move forward. So yeah, kudos to you. Thank you. But in terms of a family that is coming to the book, picking up the book, maybe their child has a couple diagnoses, they're going to go through that checklist. What's going to happen next? Like, what can they expect in terms of how it's going to give them this potential viable path? It's going to let you look deeper under the hood. Say, I talked with a parent this morning whose child is on several psychiatric meds, who has a a significant problem with regulation. And just this month, they found out that she has so much gut disorder. Uh, And this was, this conclusion was drawn by a major hospital, not by a nutritionist sitting off in an obscure corner of the practice, that her gut disorder is such that she doesn't absorb any of her medications. Mm, Wow. So it's useless. So now they're going deeply into gut healing. And I've been trying to figure that out as fast as possible. But that's what the book really strives for is looking under the hood. Don't just go to the top and say, this child has got a temper out of control. So we're going to try this med. Oh, and now we have to improve attention. Now we have to do this med. And then and then we have three or four meds stacked up and it's not really getting this child up to a functional level. We have to go look someplace else. This can happen in so many ways. The child on psychiatric meds that you find out has a gut issue. The child who's been doing talk therapy for years, but actually doesn't process language well. The child who has terrible attention control in the classroom, though not outside the classroom, and you realize you have a sensory issue. So really making sure we've looked under the hood, and that's really what we're trying to do with it. And then once you've looked and you say, wait, I think I do have a nutrition or a gut issue, or I think I do have a sensory issue, the book explains what as briefly as possible. And as you know, we try to be comprehensive and it's a little long, but we really try to be concise. What is a sensory processing disorder? What is an auditory processing disorder? What are nutritional issues? And then if it hits the mark from there, how do you find a qualified provider? What questions would you ask them to give you some reassurance that this is a person who can be helpful to you? Because I think as anybody who's gone down these roads sometimes you feel like the person that you're working with that you had high hopes for misses the mark. Mm -hmm. And then you feel like I've wasted time and money and my child needs me to not do that. And any parent who's been through it knows how anxiety producing it is. And the opening story in the book, true story. And you can see how anxiety producing it was for them on their long road of trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's so interesting. I just received an email the other day through to parenting, someone had heard one of my podcasts, and she wrote to me that she's a speech pathologist and works with kids, but she had never heard of the term twice exceptional, which is, you know, a a child who's gifted and has some other sort of neurodifference going on. And it's a very complicated way to be. But that was very surprising to me and makes me realize how 
you know, just what you said, that sometimes even the people who are working with our children, that we're expecting that they kind of have all the answers or understand all these complicated issues, they may only be working in their one area and not be considering other pieces of the puzzle. Exactly. And I think that's a very important note is sometimes even exceptionally good practitioners only practice within their specialty. And you you, you end up having to be the person who is the most well-rounded sometimes in terms of understanding, having a comprehensive sense of your child's needs. And you can't always expect a practitioner to know even twice exceptional, which you think is a pretty common term at this point. No, I'm surprised at that is something, I mean, there's a lot of parents who are like, I never had heard this, but this is what's going on. And it all makes sense now, you know, information is power. Yeah, I would love to know a little bit more. I'm super intrigued by this idea of alternative approaches, because I think that and tell me where I'm wrong here, but I think it's probably not typical to have more standard of care approaches and alternative approaches conjoined in, in one book. So I'm curious, what are some of the alternative approaches that you've encouraged parents if that's the right fit for them to explore? Well, we included it and we rationalized it in the front of that chapter by saying, if John Hopkins and the Mayo Clinic can offer integrated medicine, so can we. These are places that offer integrated medicine. Um, They're going to treat you, treat a cancer with chemotherapy, but also with meditation. So it's coming. Offering integrated care is, is the emerging approach in some of the major hospitals even. And then, well, actually, I think some of the things that were considered alternative are now being considered mainstream. Sensory processing disorder mm-hmm. was an alternative care approach for you know, a number of years and is still an alternative care approach in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have the foundation of research yet for some of the bigger players to say, that is standard of care now. But in terms of complementary uh, naturopathic medicine, being able to understand that if your child is sick fairly often, they don't have a very strong immune system, then they're not going to be as available for learning and their attention is going to be off and they're not going to feel good. Neurofeedback, biofeedback, there is research emerging that, uh, and mainstream research, National Institute of Health, saying we do consider neurofeedback to be an approach that has some effectiveness for attention deficit disorder. And the people doing neurofeedback also feel like they can use it successfully with some other challenges. Chiropractic neurology, these are chiropractors who have specialty training in neurology. They do some very interesting work way deep down in reflexive responses, infantile reflex, infant reflexes that you haven't grown out of, just looking at neurology that is not quite in sync, this asynchronous development, and then have exercises for building that up. Craniosacral therapy, I had really not heard of. I probably heard of it in the late 90s, but it's a very light touch approach. But I have found it so useful for so many people with concussion but also useful for children who, say, spent their first year lying in an orphanage on their back. This resetting, gentle resetting of these systems that really got out of whack from not being held and moved enough. And then we have uh, Kim, who does acupressure. We have her protocol in Learning Enhancement Acupressure Program, which was developed to support learning disabilities. And I've had actually great success with that with my kids who have trouble with emotion regulation. Uh, I found that approach has been very, very calming for just pretty much everyone I've sent into it. And I don't usually have that level of return. (laughs) And so it's been, and then we, we really believe in nutrition and biomedical. And I've had to go places with that. Once again, when parents have had all sorts of standard of care, we have a story in the book. I had a baby sent to me. I usually, I'm not seeing children at eight months. But her eyes were rolling to the back of her head, and she was zoning out. And the parents, of course, had rushed her to the emergency room, and they did video, video EEGs, and they said, these aren't seizures. And so they kept her for three days at one of the top children's hospitals in the country, trying to sort out why her eyes are rolling to the back of her head, and she's zoning out. And they couldn't, genetics, metabolics, neurology, everybody looked, uh, worked her up and could not find anything and released her. And the pediatrician sent it to me saying, is this autism setting in? I was like, well, autism doesn't set in that way, but send her in. I'll take a look. I didn't know what I was going to do. But as I started talking, found out she had developed breast milk jaundice early in her life. 
and her mother was had removed gluten, dairy, nuts, coffee, all sorts of things from her diet to help manage it. And this child had thrush that had not cleared on multiple rounds of nystatin. And what's a healthy eight-month-old doing with thrush? Her immune system should be stronger. And so I said, I'm going out on a limb. And this is you know, over a decade ago when I first started going out on limbs. <laughs> and <laughs> I said, I think it's in her gut. And sent them off to an integrated medicine pediatrician who said, yeah, she's lined with yeast. And when the yeast has die off, it causes her, it, it's having a neurological impact that's causing the eye rolling. Did a yeast control diet that immediately cleared it up and cleared up the sensory issues and the irritability and the emotion stuff. And she became this delightful little baby. But it took a second doctor after that, when they were having trouble coming off all the supplements they were doing to manage it, who said, she's not producing enough digestive juices, and that's causing the yeast to flourish. So they corrected that, and then she was good to go. That's so fascinating. Wow. I'm glad that they found you. And I'm glad I, I went out on a limb, because I am i don't do gut work. But when the top, I, and this is what happens, I have a family who has done everything and seen some of the top specialists at some of the hospitals, and they're still stuck, then i I'm going to go out on a limb and say, well, you haven't done this yet. Let's, what, what's going to hurt? Eyes are still rolling to the back of her head. She's still zoning out. And um, mm-hmm. turned out to be a, uh, a gifted child who just was delightful. And everything went re- very well once. But it took them probably a year and a half to get through all of that. Yeah, I mean, these are all things I think that so many of us are super interested in and including me just kind of learning about all of these pieces and I will admit and I've said this on a previous episode I had a nutritionist on the show to talk about the relationship between nutrition and ADHD and sometimes we feel overwhelmed that there are so many things we could be doing and we just kind of pick our lane and stick to that lane and some of us do and then there are other people who just power through and do it all and make people like me feel like we're miserably failing our children. But it seems like your book is a really nice way to to kind of explore and consider these different pieces, as opposed to feeling like, okay, now I've got to get all these books on this, you know, like your book is a nice, as you said, a starting point, it's a way to start to understand how these different pieces might be fitting in, or playing a role in what's going on with their child. And then we can kind of progress and and make some decisions and you provide suggestions on where they can move forward for all of these areas. Yes, it's, you know, we, we, we were really, I think the hardest part is knowing whether you've got a good provider. And so we try to help with that by giving you questions to ask and, and see if they just, yes, they, they've answered things and some as simple as describing your child. Do you work with children like this? And if they say, well, not often, but I think I can. Yeah, and, and, and take that into consideration. And you might find someone that says, yeah, this is, this is primarily what I do. Like, there's a difference between speech and language. Speech is your ability to articulate the sounds, to make a clear t sound, to make a clear s, s sound, or r sound, the freaking r sound. It's a killer. <laughs> but language is the ability to understand what's said to you and to produce a communication. So you have children who can't make an r sound, but who actually can communicate beautifully in terms of the content of their speech. Then you have the child who can form every sound in the world, but actually has poor communication. They don't use the language or they don't understand what was said to them well. If you've got a speech problem, you need a speech specialist who knows how to get the tongue organized and, and give them strategies and stretch the mouth in certain directions. But if you have trouble understanding language or producing it, you need the language specialist. And it's those sorts of differences where we're hoping to move you in the right direction more quickly by explaining that difference. And then you say, oh, my kid's got a speech issue. Or, oh, wait a minute, it's not speech at all, it's language. And then that's going to help you. Hey there, it's Debbie. I love making this show and sharing conversations about how to support our awesome neurodivergent kids. I've seen how even one little insight from an interview can spark a big shift in daily life. But I know that raising complex kids can be messy and lonely. And just when we think we figured it out, something comes up that boots us right back to feeling overwhelmed and stuck. 
That's why I've poured everything into creating a way for parents like us navigating complex parenting journeys to join together and chart a path that feels positive, hopeful, and doable. It's the brand new Differently Wired Club experience. In the club, you'll get personal support from me and other seasoned parent coaches, six live calls every month where you can connect and get your personal questions answered, the opportunity to learn directly from authors and experts like I have on this show, monthly themes for getting specific and tactical, an exclusive private podcast feed, and the best, most generous community of parents. Seriously, these folks show up for themselves and each other, and that right there is really everything. Because it's a daily reminder that we're not alone. Our kids aren't broken, and we have totally got this. The recently rebooted Differently Wired Club is on a brand new platform with its very own iOS and Android app. It is such a great space. However you learn, whatever your style, no matter the ages, genders, and neurodivergent profile of your children, the Differently Wired Club can help you cultivate the positive shifts you're hoping for. Join us today by going to tiltparenting.com slash club. That's tiltparenting.com slash club. I hope to see you on the inside. Are you overwhelmed by the things that get in the way of you doing what you want to do? Are you looking for ways to simplify life to better align with your values? Do you want to create space in your schedule so you have room for more of the good stuff? Play, joy, relationships, gratitude, and more? If you answered yes to any of these questions, I invite you to check out Edit Your Life, a podcast to help you edit the unnecessary from your life so you have more room to enjoy the awesome. Through episodes with me, Christine Co, and a range of super smart, compassionate, and thoughtful guests, you'll come away with big picture insights and practical ways to declutter your home, schedule, and mental space without getting bogged down by perfection. I have always believed that small moments and actions matter tremendously. My goal is to help you find agency and space in your life through doable baby steps that will leave you feeling accomplished instead of overwhelmed. Check out Edit Your Life wherever you enjoy your podcasts. Do you feel that practitioners themselves are also going to be interested in your book or have you gotten feedback? Because I would imagine that this would be so helpful for them as well to kind of understand and learn more about the kids that they're working with. We like to think of it as a great reference yeah, <laughs> for pediatricians, for teachers, for special ed teachers, for speech language therapists, sensory therapists, you know, to think holistically because they're watching this child work. And if they, like I say, an occupational therapist sees a child doing great one day, but really foggy the next, ask a few questions. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have eczema? Does this child have eczema? Let's look a little bit and see if we can see what's causing this child to be on and off. And could it be something a little bit deeper? Right. Could you maybe just tell us who this book is for. I mean, as I said in the in the beginning of our conversation, I know that it's very comprehensive. But if you think about the range of neurodiverse experiences that our kids have, like, are there specific differences that it's more resonant with? Or is it really addressing all kinds of difference? I don't think we could write a book that covered all the possible ways a human being can present. But we're taking the majors, the major challenges in speech sensory motor, attention, social reasoning, the autistic spectrum disorder challenges, and reading disabilities, you know, twice exceptional. We, we had a whole series where we just did many, you know, little mini chapters because the book would have been too heavy. Um, <laughs> so we are trying to serve the major things that can emerge. And then hopefully there's enough in the book that say you've got a really atypical child Um, Or you have a child who, say, has a chromosomal disorder, like Down syndrome or Fragile X. I think this book would still be useful. And I have done a couple of podcasts with parents who who have children with clear disabilities, such as Down syndrome. We got in great conversations. I did not realize that celiac disease is more common in people with Down syndrome. Hmm. I did not know. And so I'm learning things already, too. But for them, the book becomes useful because it helps them pick apart you know, everybody tends, let's say, with a child with Down syndrome to say, oh, it's Down syndrome. There's nothing you can really do. But that's really not true. This child's going to feel so much better off of gluten mm-hmm. because they have celiac disease. Mm-hmm. And if you just blame the problems on having Down syndrome, you're going to be in trouble. So, yeah, we think the book is useful for a wider range, but it's dealing with primarily the learning 
the more common learning challenges. I know this is going to be a book that our listeners are going to want to go out and get. And now I'm inspired to finish going through it this mm-hmm. weekend and, and make sure that I go through the checklist with my husband and see where it leads us. I'm so curious. So how can you said that you just did a mini series with some chapters? How can people learn more about your work and the book? The website is www.childdecoded.com. And then the book is available on Amazon. And the website, though, has some of our, our website has the chapters that wouldn't fit in the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's common chapters. <laughs> but um, you can read a couple of chapters, you can read little bits of the book, and you can see is like, oh, yeah, this sounds like something I need to look into. Um, and hopefully that'll help. And then we're at Amazon. And there's some more there's some of the reviews we've gotten have been really strong. And we're really pleased with it. So that might be the easiest way to get a closer look is to go to childdecoded.com. Great. And listeners, I'll leave links to childdecoded.com and to the book on Amazon as well. So you can go from the show notes page and go right there. And yeah, I mean, just sitting down to read, there's a fantastic introduction by one of your co-authors, Marika Jones, which she shares her story with her son, CJ. And I just like every sentence, I was like, just totally resonated with me and got me so excited about what's possible and, you know, the potential for for changes, little changes we can make to just meet our children's needs and see some incredible shifts in what's happening. So it's, again, great work. Again, as a writer, so impressed with all that went into this book. So congratulations. And thank you so much for kind of walking us through it today and coming on to the show. It was a pleasure talking to you. And thank you so much for inviting me. You've been listening to the Tilt Parenting Podcast. For the show notes for this episode, including links to the book Child Decoded and the other resources we talked about, visit tiltparenting.com slash session 74. And a quick invitation to try our free Differently Wired 7-Day Challenge if you haven't done it yet. When you sign up, I'll email you a short inspirational video every day for one week with a tip you can incorporate into your life right away to shift your experience in a positive way. You'll also be invited to join a private Facebook group for people who've gone through or are currently doing the challenge. More than 700 people have gone through the challenge so far. It's free, it's ongoing, and it's designed to help you find more peace and confidence in your parenting journey today. To join, visit tiltparenting.com slash seven day. Lastly, if you like what you heard on today's episode, please consider subscribing or leaving a review on iTunes. Both things help our podcast get noticed in the crowded podcast space. Thanks again for listening. For more information on Tilt Parenting, visit www.tiltparenting.com. Hey, are you a parent of a teenager? Are you feeling overwhelmed about how to be what they need while also holding limits and boundaries that keep them safe? Are you tired of conversations that negate how messy the season of parenting is? Well, I've got you. My name is Casey O'Rourke. I am a positive discipline trainer, parent coach, and the host of the Joyful Courage podcast. Every week I come to you with an interview, digging into tough topics with experts I trust and solo shows that go deep into the personal growth and mindset needed to raise teens in a way that grows them into confident, capable young people. I am not afraid of getting real about the intersection of conscious parenting and the teen years, while also bringing in vulnerability, humor, and lightness. I'm walking the path with you and honored to serve. Listen to Joyful Courage on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume podcasts.